A simple sketch of a generator is shown below. And then 9.1 says the north and south poles of the magnet remains unchanged. If the coil is rotated in the direction as shown in the sketch, will the induced current flow in the direction as indicated? Answer yes or no. So basically what they're asking us is asking us to determine uh, the direction of the induced current, right? Um, first of all, let's note how the coil is being rotated. The coil is being rotated anti-clockwise, right? And then here is our north pole and here is our south. So with our index finger, we're going to point from the north to the south. Here we are applying Fleming's right hand rule, right? And then after you do that, you're going to pick one side of the coil. Either you're going to pick A, B, or you're going to pick C, D, right? When you're rotating the coil anti-clockwise, C, D is going up, right? And then A, B is going down. So with your thumb, you decide which side you are taking. If you take C, D, then your thumb must face up and your index finger should go from north to south. Let's, so let's take CD. So if you take CD, here you're going to have your thumb uh, pointing up. If your index is going from north to south and your thumb is pointing up and then you turn uh, your middle finger um, 90 degrees relative to your index, then your middle finger will be pointing from C to D. Uh, let me just use a better pen there. It will be pointing from C to D, right? So the induced current uh, that is given to us on this sketch, right, uh, is not true. So the answer here should be no. It's very difficult to indicate uh, the right hand rule or the left hand rule uh, when I'm making videos like this, uh, but I'll put some notes on the description so that you can see how it works and see why I'm seeing the answer is no. And then let's move to 9.2. 9.2 says is the output voltage AC or DC. The output voltage will definitely be AC. Now, why do we say that? We say that because of the presence of slip rings and not split rings right we're saying that because of the presence of slip rings and carbon brushes right so uh, it's ac because we have uh slip uh rings and then let's go to 9.3 9.3 says what will happen to the output voltage if the coil is rotated faster so the output voltage when the coil is rotated faster uh, is going to go up right uh, so the answer here would be increase increase and then another way uh, you can use if you wanna increase the output voltage is to use magnets uh, that are more powerful right or or basically increase the strength of the magnetic field right and then now we can go to 9.4 9.4 says what is the position of the coil relative to the magnetic field when the output voltage is a maximum uh, that position would be parallel right uh, because when it's perpendicular uh, that's when our voltage is zero and then when it's parallel uh, the voltage is maximum and then we can go to 9.5 which i've been waiting for this entire time uh, we sort of are using electrodynamics and electro circuits uh, at the same time right so here we told that lights in a household are connected in parallel as shown in the simplified circuit below. So lights uh, or other, any other appliance, appliances, they work as resistors, right? Uh, that's just something I want you to note. So we are told that we have two light bulb rated uh, 100 watts and 220 volts and then uh, we have another one, 60 watts, 220 volt, two, uh, respectively. 
are connected to an AC source of RMS uh, 220 volts. And then the fuse in the circuit can only allow a maximum of 10 amps, right? And then let's ignore the resistance of the conducting wires. 9.5.1. So 9.5.1 says calculate the peak voltage of the source. So what is peak voltage of the source? Peak voltage of the source is V max, right? And then this 220 volts that we have here is our VRMS, right? Uh, root mean square voltage. So we're gonna have V RMS equals to V max divided by uh, square root of two. So what is our VRMS? Our VRMS is 220, which is equals to V max divided by square root of two. So our V max uh, will be equals to, we're multiplying 220 by the square root of two. So if you do that, uh, I'm getting uh, 311.13 uh, volts, right? I uh, hope you're getting the same thing. And then for 9.5.2, it says calculate the resistance of the 100 watt light bulb when operating at optimal conditions. So let's go to the 100 uh, watt bulb and look at the information we have so that we can answer our question, right? Uh, it's rated 100 watt so we already know that the power uh, average uh, will be equals to uh, 100 watts uh, what else do we know uh, we know that it needs 220 volts right uh, because uh, that's given on the rating so here we're gonna have uh, vrms uh, being equals to uh, 220 volts and now what are we looking for we're looking for the uh, resistance right so what is the resistance when you're working with electrodynamics instead of having uh, let's say v equals to i multiplied by r you instead have v rms and i rms and you're gonna use v rms and i rms uh, when you're calculating power two uh, right let me just erase this and we carry on. So now we're going to have power average equals to VRMS multiplied by resistance squared, right? Uh, the only difference uh, is that now we have VRMS instead of just V that we were already using. So now we're going to have uh, the power average uh, being equals to VRMS squared divided by R, uh, which we're already using in electric circuits, but then instead of VRMS, we just had V. So what is the power average? The power average is 100, and then the VRMS is 220, and then we square it, and we divide by uh, the resistance. So the resistance will be 220 squared divided by 100. So let me just uh, punch that in my calculator real quick and uh, see what I get. So that is uh, 220 squared divided by 100 is giving me a value of 484 uh, ohms, right? And um, yeah, I think I think that's all. That's all. Uh, we can move to 9.5. 9.5.3 five marks uh so we bound to do some work here but uh is it really uh let's see what happens so 9.5.3 is saying the 60 watt light bulb is now removed and replaced by an electric ion okay okay an ion generally consumes more power than a bulb right yeah, and then it goes on to say with a power rating of 2220 watts. Makes sense. It's an ion. We are replacing a bulb. Explain with the aid of a calculation why this is not advisable. Hmm. Yeah, so now what I'm thinking is uh, this ion has a, a power rating of 220. So for ion, uh let's just do, yeah, yeah. let's just uh jot down some information for the ion 
Uh, for the ion, we have a power of uh, 2,200 and uh, 2,200 uh, watts, right? And then the ion uh, will experience a voltage of 220 volts, right? Uh, because it will be parallel to the 100 watt bulb, which is receiving 220 volts, uh, because our power source can only give us 220 volts, right? So we have the power, we have the voltage, uh, we can determine uh, the resistance, right? The resistance and then we can determine the current what would the resistance help us with if we determine the resistance uh, then we can calculate uh, 80 right the total current but then another way of which you can calculate the total current is if we just use the power and the voltage right so let's say that the power is equals to vrms multiplied by irms so our IRMS uh, will be equals to uh, the power, which is 2,200 uh, divided by uh, 220. And this will be equals to 10 amps. So on this line here uh, that I'm circling now in yellow, uh, let me just make that yeah more appealing. So on that line there, we're going to have 10 amps right but then we also have this line here which will have its own uh current uh, we can actually calculate that current actually uh because we know the power there and we know the voltage so okay fine current of the 60 watt battery uh, will be equals to uh, the power divided by 220 so let me just put that in my calculator real quick and see what we get where's my calculator where's my calculator okay 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 so we have 60 divided by 220 uh, which is equals to 0 0.27 so 0 0.27 and then the fuse can only allow a current of 10 amps but now we are requiring a current of 10.27 so what's going to happen the fuse is going to burn out because the current that is required is greater than that which the fuse will let pass through right so it will not be advisable at all to have this uh, electric ion on the circuit of hours